Uh, good to be here too. Hulkingston Rovers in the red and white strip. And David, what a vital match this one is for both sides. Well, it is vital because, I mean, to a loss today by either side could mean a certain relegation. And uh, looking at the two and speaking to the two coaches, I'm, uh, they are fearful of the result today, and I'm sure the players are as well. So the first time that David Bishop puts boot to ball, those fans will be cheering because it's a good long kick. Chris Bibb's going to let it run dead. It's a cold day here at uh, Featherston. The wide open expanse, as you just saw in the background there, means it's a very exposed spot up here at Post Office Road. Clark for Derek Fox, now Jeff Gratian. Just celebrated his 40th birthday a week ago, and uh, what a remarkable testimony he's still playing this game of rugby league. Oh, now Paul Newlock showing his paces for the first time. Infield is Stedman and the first penalty is awarded and it's gone against the visiting side. Four offside. And it's also a scrum down debut for our referee today. Brian Galtris from Bradford. He's only officiated here once before. Well, this looks an interesting ploy. Uh, they bring Carl Harrison into it. Featherston playing down the hill, and David, I think you've got memories of a Salford player facing Featherston coming at you. That's right, in the old days it was uh, Tonks, Arnie Morgan and uh, Mal Dixon, and uh, we always knew that it was always nice to come up the hill rather than down it. A running chance for Paul Hughes, and Paul Hughes gets the ball down over the line. Now, did he bounce the ball in the act of trying to score? The referee is consulting his touch judge, and no try given. Well, they really needed a good start, and uh, certainly this looked like it. I mean, they moved the ball out wider. It's cast, cast in, catching uh, Halkayar cold, and look what when he goes for the line now. I mean, he pushes the ball inside, Furbin makes a good tackle, and the ball was lost in going over, and probably the touch judge was right in that occasion. Peter Smith, another great servant of this club, and Clark shipping, slipping the short ball for Bastian, who's in in place of Chris Burton. Suspended. A little bit leaden footed there. Still the ball squirted out of the hand. Once more, a good tackle by Sullivan on Stedman. Well, chip off the old block, he is, of course, the son of the great Clive Sullivan. That's right. New love, good running. Here's another chip off the old block. We're hearing that his father, John New love. So many Felliston players, of course, following in the family tradition here. Stedman bibs in the line. Jeff Gratian coming on to Fox's pass. Clark, Fox is there, sprinting alongside him. Now he's got a chance. Oh, he couldn't just get it out, but Bibb's there. Chris Bibb, five yards out. And they've got another six tackles to come. Uh, no, they haven't. No, they haven't. It's on the last tackle. In fact, the referee, I thought, was uh, saying that there were six more to come. It's desperate. Alan Banks, five yards out, and it'll be the handover. So, Hulkingston Rovers, very nervous moments for them. It was certainly because Featherston's forward have been a bit leaden-footed, but uh, when they come through on the burst, they are causing problems to the Hulk KR defence, but it has matched up to everything that Roger Millwood no doubt expects it to this afternoon. Well, Roger Millwood looking very pensive at the moment. He was very relaxed just before the game, waving to the crowd here. He wants to see what's happening there. And that turned out to be a good kick. It's Penn Featherston right back front of their own posts this is Paul Hughes who runs like a second row forward which is what he usually is of course playing out of position to help the club out Fox there's an overlap over on that far side if they can get the ball out there here's Fox the timing of the pass crucial and he couldn't get the ball away now loses it 
penalties given against Old Kingston Rovers. Coming down the hill again. Gratian and Fox involved in everything. And now Stedman makes the break in midfield. It's lifted inside for Banks. Banks has support with Peter Smith. And Banks might just get there himself. No. Fierce tackling. How they needed it. But they're really massed now. Oh, and the ball goes to ground. And really, Featherston should have capitalised on that position. Well, Stedman is, a, is, is a, a fearful opponent. And look at the way that he carves this whole KR defence aside. But that's good interchange play there, and Banks really goes hard. And to get through George Fairburn's tackle means that he must be running with some force. Well, I imagine Peter Fox will have plenty to say about the fact that they uh, then gave the ball away close to the line. And it's been desperate defending for Hulk KR, but now they've a chance themselves to make a break. And the stand-up half manages to slip it as well for Laws. Now then, can Hulk KR get a try? Over on that side is Sullivan. The tackle from Viv is good. This is lively. And it's now Hulk KR's chance. Wayne Parker made the initial inroads there. So, it's the turn of Featherston's supporters to uh, worry a little. Coming up the hill, it's welcome respite as well for Hull KR. Gavin Miller now, good ball. George Fairbairn's up, linking nicely. Last tackle. Well, like Miller, the little chip through. It's a difficult one, he handled it well and makes good ground here. crowd appreciated that as Ian Smales who saved his side on that occasion Peter Smith Sides passing this ball around and again it's moving very swiftly across the three quarters and out here on that far side is Smales cutting inside Fitcher but he's got the support this time oh and the pass goes to ground picked up by Derek Fox and Featherston have spurned it now three good chances of scoring Well, Featherston have certainly put in, uh, have got their game plan in action because they're moving the ball out wide not letting the ball stand still at all, it's been moved out wide and this catches Hulk KR because they turn in defence into attack and that's a superb pass which puts him away Bishop is coming across here but he's wrong footed quite easily and now it's a dash for the line but it's poor handling again here that lets them down a unique opportunity of scoring an early try So Bishop pumping the ball into the crowd has brought Rovers here to within just uh, five or six yards of that Rovers try line. Well, Porter is a huge man and he's got that one away for David Watkinson who hasn't scored a try for a couple of years. One of his last two tries was against Featherston. Miller now. Oh, he's clever enough. And Gavin Miller! Well, that's why he's one of the best loose forwards in the world. Just the inspiration that Hulkingston Rovers wanted. And Gavin Miller fooled everybody. Well, they've defended well of Hulkingston Rovers. Now they're on the attack, and uh, really they're making Featherston tell for this. But Miller's so strong, stepping out of a tackle. What a good try. Now is the uh, good old trusty boot of George Fairbairn a good fettle? As we'll see. He's back in the side and he's taken over the job from Colin Armstrong and that's why straight through the middle. Good start for Hull KR. They lead by 6-0.
are still willing to throw it around and Trevor Clark there does so well and Mueller streaks away Paul Mueller, oh they just got his ankle there it was Bishop who did it I wasn't actually sure whether he touched it or whether the motion had just put New Love off. He certainly did well enough. Now a kick through, and Hughes goes for it. It'll just go out of play. But uh, New Love looked for all the world as though he was going to be a scorer here. Well, he did because he's so fast, but, I mean, uh, this is when they are at their best, when they can slip the ball, and that's an excellent pass then by the hooker, and puts him away, and he's showing the sort of form we saw. But what a marvellous uh, dive tackle by David Bishop, which really stopped a certain try. Here come Fenniston with Stedman. Graham Stedman just slipped as he tried to change direction. So Fenniston still come looking for that elusive first try. Oh dear, and that was badly put down. He, came, he got too close to Peter Smith there, did Carl Harrison? I don't think he was meant to be in the move. As a result of it, he got in the way of a pass. Well, it was meant for somebody on the outside. And that shows the little lack of organisation they have in the middle. astonishing we've had only the one try so far because there have been so many moves that look certain to produce tries Ooh, that was a difficult one and Peter Smith for Featherston picks it up Mueller takes his pass and that was very loose play from Hull KR Derek Fox they'll be looking for inspiration from him now a little live wire Great Britain International yes he is I would say that he must still be in the top half doesn't scrum halves in rugby league Clark for Fox once more, they missed out Gratian, but Peter Smith comes romping towards the line, Fox takes his pass. Glen Bell, Clark, well it's going through a lot of hands, but they're not making any yardage. It's just that one incisive break that they're looking for, Peter Smith again, support from Chris Bibb, five yards, three yards out maybe now. Last tackle, they really have to score. Clark, oh, again, it's gone to ground, but it was knocked back, and they have a huge chance here. New love, ball, new love. Again, if you'd have given that ball out, Smales had to score. It didn't come, so they're still looking with Stedman now. Well, how haven't they managed to score? Perhaps Jeff Gratian will have the answer. He loves it, doesn't he? He loves his rugby league. Smith, who's been at the heart of some good moments, banks, and now Chris Bibb is in. The roars go up, and Featherston have the try they so richly deserve. Well, it's been threatening since the first minute of the game, but it looked as though it might be one of those days when they were never going to get there. Chris Bibb has got put the record straight. Well, it was inevitable. Peter Smith uh, as well, a shrewd operator is Peter, puts the ball out wide. Banks, who's done so much good running, and Bibb coming as good fullbacks can do on the outside to score the try. Well, they put so much pressure on this LKR defence, a little inexperience hasn't allowed them to score points, but this time there's no doubting at all about it. The overlap is created for Bibb to score. An important kick, this one for Graham Stedman. It's on his right side, uh, being a left-footed kicker, it's the best side for him. So he'll try and curl it between the posts. Oh, what a good kick! Well, up go the umbrellas. And the blue and whites, a level. 6-6, six, six, and they really deserve that. Fox, there is Peter Smith. I think you must have played against him and Jeff Gratian. I have, that's right. I remember Jeff when he was a tall, gangly second row forward. Look at this, there's another tall, gangly second row forward. John Bastian from the Milford Club in Leeds, who was signed last season. And they've not let him up in the tackle. And so a penalty for Featherston and the chance for them to go into the lead. And Stedman will kick for goal. Because he knows that Featherston need as many points as they can in this first half. Yes, it's a very important kick, this one, because, I mean, they're not, uh, they'll have the elements in their favour a little, but, of course, the slope is uh, in their favour the first half. 
and they'll know they'll have one heck of a game in the second half, so it's a vitally important kick. Cheers tell you again, it's two in two for Graham Stedman, and from being six points behind, they go in front. Just down below me, Jeff Grayson has been having a chat with one of the tough judges, laughing and joking, despite the fact he's got a bleeding bottom lip. Peter Fox, as always, has a lot to say about things. Wish I could lip read. He's got a rather different headgear on to the one he had at the start of the match. Has to check the weight of the ball, maybe. It's been a gritty Featherston performance. Things didn't go well for them in the early stages when they spurned some chances. But it's desperate now for Hulking Heroes not to concede any more points before the break, and Gratian slipped it away. Good ball for Carl Harrison, and Harrison is hauled to the ground in the end, but they're massing once more, and uh, oh, they've got another six tackles, and Fox for Stedman. Fox takes it back. Desperate for Hulke, the touch judge is on. And off again, the referee told him to go away. Four minutes to half-time, can Hulke hold out? It's an onslaught from Featherston. Fox... He's going to try and tunnel the way through then. Gratian on the charge. And still Gratian, and Gratian get Oh, and Trevor Clark had to be a scorer if he'd have held on. Just watch this now. I mean, Jeff comes into the man. He's knocking against the big... But he turns in this tackle here, and he's still able to get the ball away. And it was only the poor handling and lack of anticipation of the hooker coming up that they didn't have a try. Whoops. Featherston's ball... Harrison, the man falling on it. And there are 60 seconds of a very good first half left. Get him outside, Fox skipped through there, but uh, there was crossing. And so the penalty goes to Hulk KR. Right on the halfway line. Bishop's the man who put the boot to the ball, send it spinning high and out of the ground. So a chance for Hulk KR just before the hooter. Both sides will be glad to get back into the uh, dressing rooms, I imagine. And there it is, the end of a, a super half, David. Yes, it was super exciting football in uh, in very bad conditions, slippery underfoot, on the rain coming down. But uh, Featherston have played well. They played the short game well. They backed up superbly. Inexperience once or twice have cost them points. But Hulk Kayar know they've got a battle. But at least they've got the slope in the second half. So a try apiece. Chris Bibb won for Featherston. Gavin Miller won for Hull Kingston Rovers. But those two Graham Stedman goals against one for George Fairburn nudge on, Featherston on, into put in. Have a glorious opportunity here. And this would really lift their morale if they could do something. And Gavin Miller, oh, it's given away, and the chance now is Smales, sprints up the touchline. What a start for the second half, and Bishop's got back to nailing. Well, it's uh, been cut and thrust as this game all the way, and that was just a bit typical of it. Well, uh, that was incredible, wasn't it? We kicked off, Featherson under pressure, Hull KR won the scrum, and they then lost possession, and it came along to Featherston, who nearly had an exciting breakaway for a try. So in the first half, the scrums came out even. And Featherston won the only one to go against the head. Uh, Hull KR conceding two more penalties than the home side. And the errors in play on a very bad day for rugby league here with the wet ball. Featherston making two more than Hull KR. Can 
Johnson. Good to see him back. Well, there's no better talker of the game than Peter Fox, and he'll have had plenty to say in the dressing room, I'm sure, to his team. Important match for them. Because I think Featherstone will feel if they can win this one, they'll be in the first division next season. That's right, uh, but it is vitally important. I think it showed on the face of both sides that they came out for the second half. Here's Fox sprinting towards that 25 line. This is Featherstone's chance coming up the slope, and Gratian gives it back inside, and Stedman is there. Fox once more. Good passing, Smith. Oh, it was good passing until it was John Bastian who put it down, holds his head certainly not an easy day for handling well it isn't but I think that uh, they've moved it so well they are moving the ball quickly and players have to be ready for those chances I don't think he was looking then uh, we went through three or four pair of hands and he was looking at the man not the ball to be the Humbersides team's ball oh and David Bishop gets away now then has he got the legs to go all the way David Bishop pursued by Bip fine tackle by the Great Britain under 21 fullback David Bishop made 60 yards there and again, it's Hull Kingston Rovers who come in with the chance, or the ball goes to ground, and it's picked up once more by Armstrong. And the referee, Ryan Goltress, awards the penalty to Featherstone Rovers against Gavin Miller. Again, what a chance. Well, that was marvellous stuff, because it didn't very often Peter Smith gets pushed off like that, and Bishop forced his way down the middle. Now, it's a desperate chase after him. Has he got the legs to get there? Stedman's after him here as well. He makes a desperate, but his pip kind of makes a desperate tackle. What a wonderful tackle. Well, we've seen some great tackles in the last few weeks on our programmes. That was one to rank with any. Here's Trevor Clark from acting half-back, the New Zealander. Popular player here, Trevor Clark. Had a stint at Leeds, of course, three or four years ago. Fox takes the return pass. There's not much way through from uh, there. Graham Stedman. New love, oh, new love is there, new love is in. What a fine try for Paul New love. His dad would be proud of him, those supporters are proud of him. And a brilliant time to get his 16th try in his first season of professional rugby league. Well, they just got over, but Stedman moving the ball out now. I mean, they nearly had Bishop scoring at one end, but Newlove pushed it off, and this tackle should have been held. He should have held him. He didn't hold him, a result of which his power took him over. A marvellous start for Featherston this second half. They say he's an international of the future. He's got the second half off to a good start. What a difficult kick for Graham Stedman, though. And... Uh, he hasn't been able to kick that one, but Featherston will be very, very pleased with the four extra points they've got. They now lead by 12 points to six. Well, psychologically, an early score really would help them, and Stedman moving it out wide here. New live on the end of it, but this is a poor tackle here. He allows him to slip out of it. His strength takes him across. The cover can't stop him. Here come Featherston with Fox and Gratian once more, and Smith. Those three such important players, so experienced, of course. Fox the ball inside is for Carl Harrison, who's run very well today, the former Bramley man. Clark. Oh, Clark's close, and Fox gets that ball back inside, spinning it through the hands once more. Last tackle, though. Penalty given against Hulkinson Rovers for offside against Watkinson, right in front of the posts. And Stedman will obviously attempt to pop this one through the middle. And it's looking good for Featherston now. Another couple of points. 14 points to six. And the anxiety is reaching a crescendo, I would think, for Hull KO. Well, it is, really, because they were in desperate defensive difficulties then, but they were moving up far too quickly on the other side, and that's a discipline that they can ill afford to, to, to do in those circumstances. And that's given him a penalty and taken it now two scores away, which they've now got to score twice convincingly. Desperately sad moments for Roger Millwood there. 
he's achieved so much with Hull Kingston Rovers over the years and it would be so sad as well to see a club of their history to go into Division 2. Yes, it would, and he's been a magnificent servant to rugby league football, both as a player and a coach, and uh, I, I, I can sympathise with him, but Featherstone are playing really well. They're up against it now, the whole KR, that ball's going to go dead, the boot of Fox. So 14-6 Featherstone lead, and important for Hulkingston Rovers to get some points now in this uh, early stage of the second half. Well, they've been stuck defensively for a long time, and perhaps it does need a kick down into the half because they're too far away from the Featherstone line to do any real damage, and as a result, they put themselves under pressure by keeping the ball in their own half. So the time may be for David Bishop to show his mettle. Well, that's right, it needs long kicks down. They've got to get out of this half. They've got to set things up in the Featherstone half. They're not doing that. Featherstone rightly so are push forcing them back all the time. They've had the bulk of the possession in this second half. The Featherstone, if they've got it now, Gratian again. Oh, lovely ball from Gratian and Mueller again. Sets off hot foot for that line. Oh, and did well. Got the ball away to Smales and Smales is still going. Oh, desperate times for Hawkinson Rovers in defence. Clark, Fox, Smith, Smith spins away from one tackle, gets it back for Fox, who's instrumental in so much. Stedman, the look to be chances out on the right here, and this is going to be a try for Paul Hughes. And Featherston Rovers now are looking a little bit rampant. In the early stages of the game, they were creating chances and not taking them. And in the second half, ironically, playing up the hill, they are taking them. Well, they're putting their game together well. I mean, they're moving the ball superbly. Watch this. I mean, they've, they've attacked from the one side. Fox moves it out. Peter Smith now takes the ball. But like all good loose forwards, doesn't just sling out a pass. Brings it back the other way. Now, Derek Fox then moves it out wide. Stedman takes the defence. He's got two forwards there who can't run quick enough. Moves it out wide. Alan Banks, who's had a superb game, draws the man and puts Paul Hughes in the corner. What a try! So, Paul Hughes, he got two tries last week, he's got another one today, and how vital they are now, this stage of the season. Another awkward kick for Graham Stedman. Again, figured in the try-scoring move. Good attempt, but it's low and wide. But Featherstone 18, Hull Kingston Rovers 6, says it all. Fox has always the mainspring of the attack. Clark from Wool just got his handle, otherwise he was going to make even deeper inroads into the Hull KR defence. Stedman now takes Fox's pass and cuts inside. Graham Stedman, he's had another fine game. There's talk of him moving at the end of the season to other clubs, but I'm glad to see the programme. Pedersen says he's not going anywhere. Stedman says the same thing. Fox kicks it too long. Fox and Stedman, such a good pair. Featherston, it's critical to them that they stay with the club. Well, they always say very good sides have very good halfbacks, and uh, Featherston uh, perhaps not had the results they wanted, but they have a superb pair of halfbacks. And it's Fox again, and Stedman's behind him, waiting for the pass. Armstrong, unfortunately, letting it go in the tackle. It's lack of possession that's costing Hull KR at the moment. They just don't seem to be able to have the ball for very long. Jeff Gratian, he's revelling in it this afternoon. And that, that really was a, looks like a head tackle from Watkinson, which referee Galtres is going to punish. Penalty given. Well, yeah, Jeff comes running into the pack now. He's holding the ball up, as he always does, gets it on the ready. And Stedman, as all good halfbacks, should be following a man who's capable of making breaks. But David Watkinson comes in here. The intention was there. He didn't actually catch him, but the referee was quite right, because if he had caught him, he most certainly would have caused a lot of damage. And with Stedman groggy, it's Derek Fox who's going to attempt 
to punish Hull KR with another couple of points. And I think he's done it too. Curls through. And it's all going Featherstone's way. It's turning into a vintage performance by the home club. Well, Eric, their, their, their enthusiasm and their commitment and the way in which Grayson and uh, Paul Smith, Peter Smith are releasing the ball at vital times. And when you have people like Paul Newlove and Stedman coming on to balls and looking for those situations, that's when the side is buzzing and they're certainly doing that this afternoon. Well, these really are awful times for Hull Kingston Rovers supporters contemplating Division 2 football perhaps now. Fox, oh, he's running the ragged at times. And Bibb looks for a gap. Didn't quite find it. They defended so well in the first half when Featherston were playing downhill, but no, Grayson barges his way over. He's held up. Otherwise, the big popular prop would have had his first try in two seasons. Well, they most certainly are keeping oh, the ball alive all the time. Uh, this is a little unnecessary now because it's been such a good game played in the right spirit. But obviously something's gone wrong and the players are making the most of it and the referee's got to get in there now, sort it out, otherwise it will degenerate into something that we don't want to or come to expect from rugby league. They move the ball here again, watch now again, Derek Fox again, good hands, lovely pass, Grayson on the burst, he really mortals, doesn't he, over that 10, 15 yards, takes everybody with him but lands the ball down on a player and not on the ground. Fox will kick. He's kicked a good effect too, and none better than that. Well, if Great Britain do have a problem at scrum half, it's still worth looking at this fella. Well, it certainly is, because uh, when he's playing with a side that can do something, and when he gets in, he's a, such a good player, he tightens everything up. He's always reliable, and that's so important at halfback. Only Watkinson has won this scrum. Oh, the ball lost, and picked up by Featherston, and yet again a mistake by Hulkingston Rovers. Perhaps that's why they're in the position they are this season. That's right, I mean, uh, they, they've messed up play the balls, they've dropped passes, they've looked at the man, not the ball, and that's caused them a lot of problems. Trevor Clark is two yards out, away from the line. Stenman behind him, pulling it out right, Fox. Oh, and there must be a great chance here for Chris Bibb's second try off Paul Hughes. It's Paul Hughes who takes the glory in the end. And that surely has finished off Hull Kingston Rovers. There's a skeleton up there in the background. And, uh, well, one doesn't want to talk about this, but for poor old Hull Kingston Rovers, that second division looms even closer. It certainly does, because uh, they put so much pressure on them, but they moved it wide and Fox's slow ball, wide ball. Watch now, they win the scrum here, it's a long ball by seven, but watch now, it's Derek Fox, and what a superb pass, puts Bib in the gap, but look, instead of greedily going on his own, he just draws two men and puts the wing in for his yet again. Marvellous try, wonderful performance by Featherstone Rovers in attack. Dejected they stand. Graham Stedman attempts to add to that dejection with another difficult angled kick, can't do it. And so Featherston Rovers have built themselves, I would think, an insuperable lead at 24-6. A little credit again to Peter Fox here, because Featherston have really come out firing in this second half. Well, he's such an infectious guy to have. I mean, he talks well to players, he uh, operates players well, and uh, this Featherston side are very grateful to have somebody like him. And, uh, if they can only put it together like this every week, then they would be near the top, not the bottom of the first division. Yes, he's done a great job as Peter Fox, just sitting quietly back there in the middle of your picture. The man who led them to a Wembley triumph, of course, in the early 70s. And they beat Bradford Northern, Fox and Harrison. Oh, and it's all going well for Feniston now. Stedman. This time it is put down. Jeff Gresham will, he can afford to smile now, but he's really enjoyed his rugby league. Well, he has, and uh, he, he's been an example to everybody, really. He still takes things on, he trains well at the club, and Peter Fox has said uh, how good he is for the young players. Is there anything left in this game for whole KR? Hallis. Oh, 
Bishop shuttling it out left now. And Paul Fletcher runs really well. Now here's one of the new breed of youngsters that Hulke are going to have to rely on in the future. And it might do their confidence, one or two of them good, I suppose, if they can have a great season in Division 2 next season, if they do happen to go down. It's certainly a bleak prospect for them. Yes, it is. I mean, they, they put in. So, I mean, when they get into Featherstone's uh, 25, they move the ball quite well, then let themselves down with a handling movement or a miss move, which doesn't quite come off. But they can show that they can break the defence, and it's uh, unfortunate. That was a good tackle, actually. Caught him around the shoulders first. Smith and New Love working well once more. Smales cutting in field. Smales, his father Tommy, of course, was a fine player at this club too. Oh, and Gratian did brilliantly there to hold on to that ball. How, how did he do that and still get it away? A tremendous play there by Jeff Gratian. Booth was the supporting player. Fox is here. Oh, and Alan Banks is going to deserve this try. Alan Banks has played splendidly. Once again, it was Derek Fox instrumental. Gratian at the start of it all. What more can you say about them? Such as the attacking potential of this club, but I mean, uh, there he goes again. But what really matters here is the timing of the pass and puts Alan Banks in. And we've shown what a fine runner he can be, leaves the defence standing, and that most certainly, I would think, has sealed everything. Surely has. Alan Banks made his debut back in the 1981 2 season, and yet he's still only 23 years of age, so he's still got a long career left in him. So Stedman's kick, well he's had plenty of chances to get the angle right from over there, but uh, again he can't negotiate it. Well they talk about classic cast, this is fabulous Feb at the moment, only 28-6. Well it is super brand of football in poor conditions, but look how the ball goes out, now watch, uh, watch him now here Derek Fox, look at the, watch how he, the man has got to go for him you see, and he puts Banks through the gap, now Banks is strong running as we've shown, Leaves everybody a clean pair of heels. Gratian again. He's never stopped running. And you think he made his debut in 1968. Oh, he's been a marvellous servant to rugby league football, and if he can turn in performances like he's done today on a regular basis, he could be playing for another 20, 30 years. Fox again, and Smith. It's all over, and a very fine performance indeed by Featherstone Rovers. They've beaten the Hull Kingston Rovers by 28 points to six. And I think we've got to say now that Hull Kingston Rovers seem destined for Division Two, barring some miraculous recovery, but for Featherstone it looks like First Division football again. Well, down on the field is Jeff Gratian, who's really enjoyed himself out there. He's with Nick. Congratulations, five tries, and if the handle of you right, it could be more than that, couldn't it? Yes, it could uh, be a few mistakes early on, you know, we could have two or three tries, but uh, the last stuck at it and we put it together and uh, it was a good performance. Now, at your age, you ought to be shattered, are you? I am tired, yes. <laughs> 80 minutes of slog, it's, uh, it's very hard, yeah. But you'll keep going? Yes, definitely. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank you very much, cheers. What a great character he is, so confirmation there. 28 points to six with five tries for Featherstone against just the one for Hull Kingston Rovers. So not surprisingly, the man of the match is in the Featherstone dressing room with David. Well, Scum Down has seen Featherstone gain a vital win here this afternoon, a magnificent team performance and many fine performances by individuals. But for me, the Stones Better Man of the Match award this afternoon goes to a player who's had a superb performance all afternoon, Derek Fox. Wonderful spirit here at uh, Featherstone and, and a vital win this afternoon. It was, yes, David. It's uh, made a bit of pressure on us, really, from those against Oldham last week. So uh, the lads knew the, uh, the job that they had to do this afternoon. They've, uh, they've, got, they've played really well today. The, the first half were a bit scrappy. We threw away chances, which we have done all season, really. But they came out in the second half and we've 
a couple of lives and a chance, and uh, hopefully I can go strength to strength. You know. Well, well done, and uh, we'll see Featherstone in the first division again next year. I hope so, David. It's, yes, it's yes, 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 yes. Are Hull Kingston Rovers resigned to being relegated now? Um, no, I don't think so, John. If you ask me the same question next Sunday evening, I'd be more positive one way or the other. But you must be bitterly disappointed the way the season's gone. Yeah, um, it's been one of those things. It seems that we've had setbacks all the way down the line, but nevertheless, at the end of the day, it's a long season and, the, and it's the right result at the end of the, the tunnel, if you like. How are you going to get out of this mess? Um, well, that's a very hard question. But uh, by continuing to endeavour and try as much as possibly can. But uh, we are in a very serious position now. The statistics behind the scoreline show that David Watkinson actually won most possession from the scrums. They went 9-7 Hull KR's way. But Featherstone's Trevor Clark took the only one in the game that went against the head. Hull KR's frustration spilled over a little, especially in the second half when they conceded nine penalties. In all, they gave away 13 to Featherstone's five. They also made more errors, but the total wasn't too high, bearing in mind the greasy conditions. Now, as one extra very revealing statistic this week, we timed both sides in terms of possession, and whereas Featherston had the ball for more than 36 minutes, Hull KR had it for only just over 17, and a mere four minutes in the second half. Now, here's Nick with the rest of the day's news and results. And it's old boy's revenge as Wakefield beat Leeds. Mark Conway stars with a try and three goals against his old club. And another ex headingly man, Andy Mason, was the other try scorer as Wakefield came back from 12-2 down. And Great Britain internationals Ellery Hanley and Andy Gregory rescue Wigan in the last 10 minutes against Bradford. The full results, the Stonefitter Championship. Featherston 28, Hulkingston Rovers 6. Wakefield 14, Leeds 12. Wigan 20, Bradford Northern 13. Division 2. Batley 13, Huddersfield 0. Bramley 34, Shawley 10. Dewsbury 14, Carlisle 4. Doncaster 8, Whitehaven 6. Heathley 10, Swinton 20. Lee 34, Rochdale 3. Mansfield 12, Barrow 36. Sheffield 24, Hunslet 10. Workington 10, Runcorn 0. York 30, Fulham 10. Top of the championship, all to play for. The most significant factor could still be witnesses' games in hand. Wigan are still in the hunt, and look who's seventh, Featherston Rovers. Not bad, that is it, for a team supposedly worried about relegation. At the bottom, Hulkingston Rovers and Halifax need a miracle, if not a second coming. But Wakefield, like Oldham last week, showed they're still in their fighting. Division two, no change in the top five placings. In fact, every team in the top eight won today, except Whitehaven, whose recent good spell was ended by Doncaster, who came from behind to win. Now, the man who scored this try for Australia in the Rugby Union World Cup, Ian Williams, is playing at Headingley tomorrow for Oxford against Cambridge in the Varsity Rugby League match. And he was watching here at Featherston today. Ian, that's the first time you've seen a British Rugby League game professionally. What did you make of it? Well, it was very hard stuff, and uh, you know, given the conditions, I thought the standard was excellent. How would you compare it with what you've seen back home in Australia? Well, it's a bit different, I guess. You know, the harder grounds tend to, to lead to a different style of play, but... Uh, yeah, certainly the uh, the skills are there, and especially in the wet conditions, they handle the ball very well. Yeah. Now, of course, we remember you from the World Cup last year, <laughs> and uh, the try you scored, and also the tackle on Rory Underwood, which was a bit spectacular. Oh, well, I've sort of become a bit infamous for that, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's certainly a lot of fun to, uh, to try something different and uh, come up here today. So it's a long way from, uh, from Brisbane. You've been playing Rugby Union, of course, over here, but now it's very much a Rugby League and the Varsity game at Headingley tomorrow. Yeah, we're very much looking forward to it. You know, obviously, after Christmas, I was involved with the Union and uh, the day at Twickenham was very special. But uh, since then, I've been playing with the, the Rugby League and uh, under um, Bev Risman's coaching, I'm certainly getting acquainted with the game. Is it difficult at all switching codes? Oh, yeah, it's two different games. Anyone who thinks they're comparable is, uh, is really kidding themselves. Just even the angles. I mean, the game's all about running and tackling, but the angles are, are what makes it different and uh, you know certainly it was an experience to play against guys who do know what they're doing as opposed to a, a rank amateur. Yeah. Would you be out, like to be out there playing that game one day? Well yeah it's certainly you know, something that I've I had an opportunity to do, do so before I came to Oxford and I chose to come to Oxford instead but uh, you know who knows what the future holds but it'd certainly be a lot of fun to come back in uh, in a different code at some stage. Yeah. Well, it's nice to see you over here. Thanks well, very thank much. you very much for having me.
Well, good luck to everyone at the Varsity match. Next week, we're back at the top of the championship, Bradford against Widnes. At the bottom, Hulkingston Rovers seem adrift without a paddle after Featherston went flying through the rain to victory. Good night.